Welcome to our show, Never Trust a Fart. Uh, we are broadcasting on Twitch to begin with, and I take it. I had some music, edited it up, put it on YouTube on every Wednesday. So this will show up on Wednesday. If you would like to be a guest on here, let us know. We will invite you to our Zoom meeting, which is what we're using the format here. That's what this is, Zoom. Streamed over to Twitch and then recorded to, for YouTube. For everybody joining us, uh, welcome to Never Trust a Fart. And <laughs> I got the pictures all switched up. So now your name is under me and my name is under you. <laughs> hey, that's, that's okay. That's fixed. We're interchangeable. We're like Legos. That's it. Hey, and if anybody's curious, our name, Never Trust a Fart, is actually based on scientific fact is I had a touch of the flu last week. <laughs> uh, so that works. Well, you know what you they want say. To if, you want out? To, <laughs> if you want to get rid of a sneeze, uh, give a person... Um, laxative they'll be afraid to sneeze so anyways welcome to never trust a fart uh my name is jinx this is bob we're our weekly discussion um sometimes we miss a week here or there but so this is life <laughs> and i'm currently you know broadcasting from a school desk apparently so hold on a second i told you i'm gonna be online for a little bit what's going on Can you just say now i told you to wait i told you to wait okay you're not even in school yet I can't wait much longer. You can wait. You can wait. Go. go. Doug, can we pause for a second? Sure. <laughs> I said, well, welcome to the uh, world of virtual online schooling. Anybody that doesn't know, Jenks is our, our techno nerd up here and i am totally not techno at all so i get a hold of a chromebook which has absolutely nothing i'm used to doing no save buttons or anything like that and i'm lost oh, and i've been constantly i pound my head against the wall on the kid you know i got raising the two grandkids and same thing it's a pain it's it an is pain. it really it really is well um we went to the auction again uh saturday night remember that um okay. the one where i got all the the comics here. I'll just give you. See? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it looks like you got beamed up. All right. You see, there's Holy the. Holy crud. Yeah, yeah. Th those are the books I bought um, that one time I told you about. Right, right. Impressive. There you go. It doesn't go back the way it's supposed to. Ah! <laughs> You're too, 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 too sicky. Yeah. So, anyways, we uh, we bought a few things. Um, Vanji kind of went off on the um, the hand tools. Okay, um, I'm, you know, I'm all, what are you doing? I mean, you, you I can see you know buying maybe two of these jigsaws just because you know they might not work, but right. six of them. <laughs> Her logic is that they're all supposed to work, and if they um, if they work, then she can turn around and sell them. So I'm all for it, you know. Yeah. Well, then she's sitting there, what the hell are you doing? When I sat there and I bid on this. Cool. Okay, okay, that's that's what's happened. Uh-oh. Yeah. Sweet, good condition. Yeah, exactly. No exactly. rotten sandwiches in there. No, doesn't smell like it either. And uh, it's like the... Scratches are down to a minimum. So this anyway. kid was whoever owned this was a little kiss butt because if you were any kind of elementary school student that I know, that uh, box used to slide real well down the school hallways. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hockey time. Yeah, pretty cool, pretty impressive. Thank you. Yeah, so I figure um, I'm looking on eBay and um, the cheapest one I saw was eighty bucks. Jeez. For a Dick Tracy one. Yeah, that that one. You know, because there's two. You know, one came out many moons later than the other one. This one's an early one. Sweet. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think I got lucky on that one. So poor. I wonder what happened. And you always want to know the backstory on those things. Yeah. You know, and that's the, the, the part I'm always curious about. But if you're ever getting extra firearms, let me know. I'll take care of them for you. So. Oh, yeah, they had a... Uh... There's an AR-15 that went up uh, that night. Some well, they do the individual things out of the uh, locker. They don't just do the whole locker. No, no, it's not a locker. It is an auction house. So they're up on stage and they just 
they got four or five people that are just constantly lifting something up and said, okay, blah, 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 blah. okay, Amy, what do you got? Blah, blah, blah. Tom, what do you got? Blah, 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 blah. You know, soul, cool. dude, soul, dude, like, yeah. and ammunition. <laughs> sweet. Um, you know, I have a whole bunch of stuff from my parents' estate that I still want to get rid of. And my mother, if it was Scottish, it was something she'd order. And you had uh, Dalton figurines and all that. Mm -hmm. And um, she got a couple of old Scottish ones. I'm trying to find out what they're worth, and I can't even find them online. So, And then we had a guy working with us. Remember Robert Kennedy over on the uh, motor line? Yeah, sounds familiar. A uh, young black guy. He worked for yeah. Toys R Us. Well, was, okay, well, he gave me a, a G.I. Joe um, Navy football player <laughs> and never took it out of the box. It's still in the presentation clamshell box and all that. And I've always been tempted to put that on and see what, at least what it's worth. But there's some intrinsic value to that one because he gave it to me. And, yeah, you know, I kind of I, I kind of know what you mean. Um, <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. As Jordy LaForge. <laughs> oh, okay. Cool. Uh, do me a favor, get ready to pause in a second here. What's that? Get ready to pause in a second. Hold on. Sweet. C-3PO. <laughs> cool. Hold on one second, okay? I got all kinds of just toys I, I can play with right here. That's cool. <laughs> That's pretty sweet. Now I know we had uh, <laughs> one. Somebody got into a uh, locker thing up here. I don't know. If, what I said, I thought they could do the whole locker at one time and not individual pieces, is because somebody did a bid and got fifteen hundred dollars for an entire locker. Yeah, um, and they got themselves almost three million dollars worth of marijuana and growing stuff. It's, since it's legal up here, the guy just stole it and was able to kind of yeah, buy a storage auction, right? Go. Yeah, yeah. No, we're in so, a, an actual auction house where um, the people bring the oh, stuff, okay, stuff to the the place, and um, they're up on a stage, and everybody's in you know theater seating kind of a thing, you know. But they're folding chairs, but you know what I mean. Yeah, I, I want to go to one of those. I have never been to one. Oh yeah, it's so. pretty nice. It's um, yeah, and going, you know, dirt cheap too. It's really amazing. Yeah, I went to the eye doctor this morning. Um, I am now wearing contacts. See. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I for close up, I, I keep my uh, glasses on top of my head, and my wife keeps on pushing for me to try and get contacts. But I'm sorry, it's alien for me to stick something in my eye other than my finger. So well, that's what I'm doing, I'm sticking my finger in my eye. <laughs> I'm not too used to it. And as a matter of fact, in about an hour, I need to make a real quick run over to an eye doctor because my son has his appointment, mm -hmm. and he's getting to be as blind as a bat. So. Well, I um, I normally wear, you know, you see me in the bifocals for the last 10 yeah. years. Um, speaking of which, me and Vanjie had our 10-year anniversary uh, Saturday. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, anyways, um, you know, I'm sitting here at the eye doctor, though, last week, and I'm thinking, um, you know, I need glasses, and um, what's the possibility? Contacts, you know, considering I got to put a mask on at work. You know, I don't that way I don't have to fight my glasses. Right. So um, they said, yeah, sure. These are bifocal glass um, contacts. Have That's you ever, bizarre. Yeah, have you ever heard of that? You put them in upside down, though, couldn't you? No, apparently um, they're either circular or they just, somehow or another, they just, you know, you know, instead of the, a line, you know, a line in the lower half is one, I, I guess um, they worked it out so it's, uh, you know, all around it or something. I don't know. But you know, I got to say something nice about this COVID thing right now is uh, um, I go out and in Oregon here, we have to pretty much wear a mask everywhere. We're there so, right away now. Yeah, I've got a uh, hunting um, uh, neck or, or whatever they call that neck thing. Uh, yeah, the wrap thing. Um, gator. Gator. Yeah. And mine's camouflage. So mm -hmm. I wear it up to here across and up and I wear my uh, camouflage hunting hat on top so all you see are my glasses right and yesterday I was at the mall with uh, with Wendy and I saw somebody I did not want to talk to <laughs> guy that used to work for me nice guy but he would just talk your ear off because he's a very lonely person right and I 
really was rushed. I didn't want to be rude to him. I loved the guy to death. I just, just, you know, there's per- certain times you just don't want to talk to somebody. Yeah. Well, yesterday was one of those times. So I was able to put my thing up, glasses down, had my hat on. All you can see is my glasses. And I exhaled as hard as I could. And when I passed them up, all my glasses fogged up. <laughs> it was great. And as I'm walking, it cleared up, but I had it down. It was like going to the CIA and all those cubicles and they could automatically fog up the windows. Yep. I had it down. <laughs> it was great. So I got myself a new system now. So, in fact, I changed, of course, I changed my mask two or three times a day. And here's my United States Navy mask. Ah. So. Yeah, they gave the kids not only the Chromebooks, but uh, they all got masks with uh, the school logo on it. That's actually kind of neat. Yeah. Um, I think I've seen our kids at our school have the logo on theirs. My son, you know, he's he's adamantly against this because his 16-year-old constitutional rights are being trampled, and it's all lies. It's all it's just to, to hold him down. It's the man keeping him down. And I, I know, lost I just, too many okay, pages yeah, to deny it. Hey, you know what? We just lost a friend the other day. You and I. Oh, who? You know, Kenny Fetter. That name sounds very familiar. He was manager of Body Shop. Yeah. He got COVID and yeah, passed, huh? Yeah. Oh man. And I've got uh, you know Betty Soul. Ministers, huh? You know Betty Soul. She used to work That's on uh, assembly uh, conveyance. Yeah. Uh, she passed away recently. You now, whenever that happens, are you friends with Vicky Stone? Yeah, uh, or not friend? I, you know, it's not close or anything. I mean, Facebook. I uh, think so. You need to let her know. They knew me and family friends remembered because people like to hear those things. That's where I saw it, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, um, but no, our minister's wife has it, so he's in lockdown. Mm-hmm. Um, a high school crush of mine had it. I could say it, but she's not following me. So, man, I was in love with her. <laughs> um, she has it now. She can't taste anything. I figure if she's got no taste now, too bad I'm married. It would be perfect for me to walk in. <laughs> So, yeah, smells gone down um, and everything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I got, yeah, I got it made. Yeah, but uh, and we just lost Kenny. So yeah, it's it's real. But I'm trying to tell this kid that one, and he's hanging around with a group of people that just uh, not helping him out with this whole thing. And you and I have discussed this, and you know, ad nauseum now. Yeah. And I believe it's it's a real thing, and I still say I do believe it's being politicized. You know, Gavin Newsom and Governor Whitmer and our Governor Brown and all that are doing some pretty bad things with it but it is a true issue yeah and uh and i use you as my primary uh proof on that one because you're living it yeah so, i see it but trying to teach a 16 year old kid who is absolutely certain his civil liberties are being taken away and he wants to fight you know a la misera- Le miserable yeah well the fastest way we can get past this is to you know stop giving host to the disease let it you know the disease die out yeah and vaccinate i mean that's what the vaccination does you know eliminates hosts so yeah. anyway um, but then you also have the anti-vax people i'm still i don't even like getting a flu shot i don't like having needles come to me so i'm probably gonna be fighting that and some of i just don't want to get needled but uh eh, seriously needles never really bothered me ever since the military when um ever since i got inoculated to go to germany just for two flipping months and we had to sit there. You remember the? Did you, you ever get a shot with those air guns? Yeah, they hurt. Yeah, if you move a little bit, that's an air blade, you yeah. know. And we had to sit there, step up between two people. They hit you in both arms. Take one step forward. Two other people would hit you in both arms, and then you step, you know, and again, two more people. So you got six, three shots in each arm, and then you and then get if the your needle. company commander's a really nice guy, he makes you go out and do push-ups. Yeah, no, they, they were nice about that much. Uh, and then we had to get the needle. So, Getting one little needle for a flu vaccination once a year, I can deal with that. I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> I can live with that one. But um, anyway, no, it, it's, it is something up here. And we've talked about this in ad nauseum, so we're probably going to be boring out any of our viewers on this one. So let's go ahead and change the gears. Yeah. But uh, just trying to teach a 60-year-old differently, it's just not having a good day. Exactly. So. Well, I found myself looking at the Social Security Network, um, <laughs> seeing about, you know, well, when can I retire? <laughs> 2094. Yeah, no, not that. Um, I, I, um, I am considered a senior citizen now. Yeah. Which is kind of a sickening thought to my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm close behind you. But 
I'm also looking at I could um, retire in seven years um, or ten. You know, if I make it to seventy, um, you know, working, uh, I, that'll be the max. You know, Social Security won't pay anymore. So I'm what that's seven to fifteen years away from retiring. It's yeah. And the sad thing is, too, I mean, congratulations for that one. Yeah. And, you know, I know you've been pretty uh, studious about putting away and taking care of stuff, but there's so many people now out there. <laughs> Who are you it's talking a comedy to? Show. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, there's so many people out there right now that had to burn through that to keep themselves going since uh, 2012, 2009, and all that nasty stuff. Well, when I was going yeah. to school to become a respiratory therapist, um, between the time the knew me closed, and I started working. Um, I lived off of what they gave us and uh, my retirement. So, yeah. <laughs> my retirement put uh, a lot of my retirement took care of my mother. Ooh. So, yeah, I can ooh. see that. <sighs> Love my dad, but the way they did their Social Security, it was almost like they were paying the government every month. Mm -hmm. And her medical bills, we were paying almost $10,000 a month for a home. And it wasn't coming out of her insurance, it was coming out of her pocket which was ultimately my pocket. So 10,000 bucks a month, it it hurt us. Yeah. And, you know, this is actually, I don't really want this to go online, I guess. But, uh, so we might want to end this one. But uh, it was not a good thing. It, no. it beat the snot out of us. No, Big so, Farm uh, and um, and uh, Senior Citizen Care, um, they're expensive. People don't realize it, and, you know, it's sad state of affairs. <laughs> It is. It is. And it's, it's, I don't know, it's just a, a part of life. They don't teach you about this one in school. No. You know, I never need to learn about the area of a uh, trapezoid. Still have not yet to know that one. But I wish that somebody had taken me aside and said, okay, when you get up to this point and you need to start doing this, look out for these little pitfalls. Because everybody falls into them. And I, I do believe the government kind of wants us to fall into those pitfalls. Because that's more, you know, money for them. Yeah. So. Um, let's see what happened in our neck of the woods. It's been funny. Uh, I've been hang on. I'm online. Sorry, grandson. <laughs> um, so I've been baking. Oh, cool. And getting ready to go. So I have rum cakes going right now. And I've got little single serve little loaf pans of rum cake. I'm uh, not rum cakes. Um, fruit cake. Uh, -huh. but my fruit cake so far has taken two bottles of brandy and I'm on a third right now. So I did they make it to the cake? Week, huh? What I do is I, I bake it when you pull them out and you know, drizzle it in the rum and you put it away. You get about two or three weeks of drizzling in a rum. So uh -huh. by the time you get to this cake, you're not going to be not rum brandy, but uh, fruit cakes brandy, rum cake rum. But uh, you, you know, you won't drive after eating these cakes. No. <laughs> I've been doing those and trying to do uh, gingerbread and. Of course, I have an eight-year-old helper trying to help me with the, eat, consuming gingerbread, not necessarily doing anything else to it, but wants to decorate and consume right now. Vanjie yeah. um, so. wants, she said she's going to make a couple more pecan pies for me. She made one in Thanksgiving. Loved it. And um, she Love said, pecan pie. Yeah, me too. She uh, said she's going to make a couple more, um, maybe send one to work with me. I so. have a, about a 15-pound pumpkin that I need to take out back, slaughter. <laughs> and bleed out, hang upside down, and then uh, field strip it. Uh -huh. And it looks like I'm going to have about 10 or 12 uh, pumpkins out of this one. <laughs> so I made a pumpkin bisque with lobster a couple uh -huh. of years ago. And nice. the family seemed to like that one. So they want me to do more of that. And it's like, I'm not going to have to buy a bloody lobster to throw on top of more pumpkin. <laughs> so, but I got to do that. So yep. pumpkin pie, lobster bisque, or, or pumpkin bisque with lobster. And I have a Japanese roasted pumpkin in a ponzu sauce so I'm going to be knocking out. So. Excellent. Pumpkin is our future right now. <laughs> it's so. feeding the family. There you go. It's the great pumpkin, Charlie Brown. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, let's see. I've got more bird feeders. You've heard me talk about my epic story about our neighbor not liking Yeah, and birds. I saw the post on, complains, on Facebook. Yep. So every time she goes, says one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of them now. 
So one of these days she'll stop complaining. I'll be able to level out. Yeah, exactly. Maybe, hell, maybe for every week she doesn't complain, you take one down. <laughs> <laughs> well, the birds are coming. Right now I walk in my front yard and it looks like uh, Alfred Hitchcock in Bodega Bay. Yep. So, <laughs> birds, the uh, birds! <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Saw the hand. Knock it off. Love it. Hi. So, well, somebody's dying to get online. So. Yeah, and um, I've been up all night, so, um, you know, I think we ought to cut this one a little bit short. A You're little, looking a little bit tired and peaked. Yeah, I've been up all night, and I, because I wanted to go to the eye doctor, um, I got to stay up all night tonight, so that way tomorrow night, uh, when I'm at work, I'm, I can function normal, you know, without... Jeez. Well, last night I wasn't, usually I get to bed early, but then I had the eye doctor, it's like, why bother? You know, so me and Vanjie figure yeah. we'll just do two nights in, you know. So that way, come if I go go to sleep at two a.m., come two a.m. at work, I'm, you know, my body's gonna say bedtime. Yeah, I need that to happen. I'm going to bed at what? Well, now the daylight savings has happened up. Now I'm I'm getting ready to go to bed around six thirty at night. Yep. Yeah. And I wake up at three thirty or four in the morning every day. And that's what Vanjie's doing. You know, I mean, it's great if you're if you're in the military. It's fantastic. Mm-hmm. You know, you're waking up automatically when you're supposed to, but when you have a family at home, you wake up at 4 a.m., the only thing that keeps you alive or keeps your company is a bloody dog. Yep. So it really gets boring because a dog is not much of a conversationalist. Yeah, man, I'm sitting there watching TV at 4 in the morning when that happens to me. All right, my I think friend. Your eyes were closed. But- yeah, those of you that have been watching, um, you know, we'll be back on probably sometime this week or next week to get uh, next week's episode. If you're watching on YouTube, this will probably be vo- posted. Uh, let's say uh, next time we go, we try to get uh, through the holiday, you know, enough for the holiday. and then. Oh, I'm definitely good for that. Yeah. Right now, it's like Christmas puked all over my house. Give me one second. Let me go over one thing. Okay. I was at the store about a year ago, and I found a really cool system. I don't even know where it is right now. But it's a... Basically, it's from Duck Tape Company, you know, the uh-huh. green duck label. But they had labels for your, your moving boxes. And what you do is you take a picture of the uh, QR code on this label, slap it on the side of the box, write down what it is. Then you take a picture of everything in the box, and it says it's in this box, this location, this what's in it. Oh, nice. So I got all these little things because they were on a closeout. I think I got them for like a quarter a piece. And they're gone now. They don't make them anymore. So I want to hurry up and get all of our boxes done, but I've taken down every Christmas box that we have. And 26 years together, we have a lot of Christmas boxes. Yeah. And then we've inherited from her mother. We've inherited from my parents. We had a lot of Christmas stuff. Mm-hmm. So my house right now looks, uh, it's a Christmas refugee camp. <laughs> so anyway, uh, with that being said, amigo, Yep. I'm going to let you go. Sounds good. And, and uh, uh, let's say sign off. To all of our very loyal watchers and then followers, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, we'll be back soon. And um, okay, we'll talk to you later. All right, sounds good. Bye now. Uh, thanks for joining us with Never Trust a Fart. If you want to support us, please go on to Patreon. Uh, you can see it on the graphic right there on how to get to it. If we call in on Zoom, uh, thank you, Zoom. Record it on Twitch. Then I go ahead and take that recording, edit it, and we place it on YouTube every Wednesday. If you like this video, please um, hit the like button. If you can subscribe, that would definitely help us out. Thank you for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Peace.